Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is the 30 minute chart of silver provided by netdania.com. Now before we get to silver, I wanted to take you over to, here's the Cloudflare site, put that up today. You can see the information will last six hours. So still trying to analyze this, more is gonna come in as the DNS updates, but the member site has been doing roughly an entire month's worth of traffic every day which is becoming very expensive to say the least so it's clearly under attack there is an attack going on and we can probably guess who is behind the attack so I don't have that many members don't have shouldn't have that much traffic but the member site is generating more traffic than the other two sites combined on a daily basis so clearly there is an attack. We'll just have to wait and see. Maybe we'll get some information about who's behind it. Speaking of attacks, there's another attack going on right now, and that's in the silver market. We can see that the paper shorts are coming in and doing a little bit of after hours activity. Now you can see the formation that we have here. It's a very, very clear type of formation I have pointed out many times we have this ascending flag formation so that's a clear one we've seen this often you can see what we're forming up here and then here's the flag we did get that little breakout of this formation today right there and now we're testing back to that level We'll have to wait and see if tomorrow morning the powers that be jump in and smash it down or if this, you can see here's one just like the one we're on, if this continues. Now you can see there's a big increase in volume and this is not unprecedented but this is significant. It appears that the paper shorts are battling the paper longs so that means more people are willing to step in and speculate that the price is going to rise on paper. You have to remember that these are paper games. The amounts are staggering. Just look at this spike here. This was the April 15th Boston bombing. Smackdown in silver and you can see put these two lines together and you get about a volume of 20 million. Now, 20 million contracts, we're talking about 100 billion ounces of silver. Think about that, folks. 100 billion ounces of silver. That's 150 years worth of mining supply. That's how much paper silver they threw at the market to crack it like that. Now, we're not seeing anything like that, but we are seeing huge amounts of volume relatively speaking to the size of the market you can see here 300,000 contracts so a million contracts that's 5 billion ounces of silver so that's quite a bit of silver again fake silver silver that doesn't exist but again the story is going to be how much strength is behind the paper longs, how much strength is behind the paper shorts. Now in the background of this is the real market and this is a report out from SRS Rocco today. We know that the real market for Silver Eagles is in a shortage and it has been for quite some time. Read some of this. As sales of gold eagles remain subdued, the market continues to purchase every available silver eagle from the U.S. Mint. Since the beginning of the year, the U.S. Mint has sold its silver eagles on a weekly allocated basis. Allocated, i.e. rationing, i.e. shortage, i.e. interference in the market. And I would say government created shortage. This means its authorized dealers are limited to the amount of silver eagles they can purchase each week. Michael White, public affairs person for the U.S. Mint, told me that in order for the Mint to build up inventory of silver eagles, <laughs> it has to ration sales to its authorized dealers. For the second week in February 10th through 14th, the U.S. Mint allocated 900,000 silver eagles at the beginning of that week. Total sales were up 
were 850,000 by Friday. The 14th total sales reached one and three quarter million. The next week, Mr. White stated in an email that the allocated Silver Eagle amount for the third week were 750,000, etc. So here's the figures, the rationing that's going on. Here's a chart he does Silver Eagle market red hot. Even though the huge amount of Eastern Gold buying continues to steal the show, retail investors are purchasing more Silver Eagles to Gold Eagles than ever. Now, if you remember, this is something that Eric Sprott has been continually pointing out. Not only are people buying more Silver Eagles, that's, that's deceptive. People are buying more in dollar volume of Silver Eagles than dollar volume of gold eagles. And with a silver to gold ratio somewhere in the 60s, I believe, it's absolutely absurd that this can continue. And of course, we know it can't continue. At some point, it's going to break. If we take a look at the chart below, we can see a definite trend. And you can see that there's the ratio. In 2010, the mint sold 34.6 million silver eagles and 1.22 million gold eagles for a ratio of 28 to 1. Each year the ratio has increased. Last year the mint sold a record 42.6 million silver eagles compared to 856,000 gold eagles. Thus the silver to gold eagle ratio increased to 50 to 1 in 2013. So far this year the U.S. mint sold 8.1 million silver eagles and 116,000 gold eagles. Investors are currently buying 70 silver eagles to every gold eagle it will be interesting to see how 2014 unfolds as the chinese continue to consume nearly 100 percent of the world's gold mine supply the paper precious metal trading exchanges will come under severe stress supplies of physical gold and silver will become tighter as the global financial system weakens in the future as one metal suffers a shortage i would bet my bottom dollars silver dollar investors will soak up supply of the other time is running out for investors to protect their wealth in gold and silver so that's the latest srs rocco now time is definitely running short let me show you how short the time is getting this is an article from zero hedge it just came out today world governments agree to automatic information sharing and it's from Simon Black of the Sovereign Man blog. It's like 34 drunken sailors holding each other up. That's the best way I can think, think of to describe the latest product from the Good Idea Factory, that is the OECD. Over the weekend, in yet another cushy five-star hotel, representatives from this unelected supranational bureaucracy announced plans for world governments to exchange all their citizens' tax and financial data with one another. The 34 member states of the OECD are enthusiastically, asked, enthusiastically supporting this measure and it constitutes the end of whatever remains of financial privacy. The premise behind the OECD's destructive pipe dream is as usual to stamp out tax evasion, but this is a misnomer to begin with. Just about every multinational company out there employs strategies to reduce their current tax liabilities that are perfectly legitimate based on existing tax laws. This is why companies like Google and Apple famously earn billions of profits but pay almost no tax. These companies have shareholders from all over the world and their solemn responsibility is to maximize shareholder value, not maximize the amount of funds that politicians in a single jurisdiction get to blow on wars and welfare. So that's what's going on. Now, who is the OECD? The OECD is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, is an international economic organization of 34 countries founded in 1961 to stimulate economic progress and world trade. Right. It's a forum of countries committed to democracy and the market economy. Right. Providing a platform to compare policy experiences, seek answers to common problems, 
and identify good practices and coordinate domestic and international policies of its members. Now let's actually look at what the OECD does. This is taxation. The OECD publishes and updates a model tax convention that serves as a template for bilateral negotiations regarding tax coordination and cooperation. In other words, these countries are coordinating together to make sure that you don't escape from their socialist tax hells. They don't want you to be able to go to, from one to another to escape politicians stealing your money. Now, the OECD maintains this FATF blacklist. The FATF blacklist was a common shorthand description for the Financial Action Task Force list of non-cooperative countries or territories, countries which perceived to be non-cooperative in the global fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. So there's their excuses. There's the phony stories they come up with to try to take all of your money. They're fighting against money laundering and terrorist financing. Now we know the, they're actually the ones behind all the money laundering and the terrorist financing. So that's just a ruse. But let's look at these countries here. Here's the FATF blacklist. And there's two countries at the top that are identified that are subject to restrictions that, and of course, here we go, Iran and North Korea. There's the two. Now, these are countries with deficiencies and you can see that list and then we have countries not committed to an action plan countries committed that have deficiencies so you can see here that the banksters have put together all these organizations they don't want anybody to escape from their net that's what this game is all about they use this excuse money laundering and terrorist financing but really what they want to do is have bail-ins and steal all the money and not have any place where anyone can escape. Now, let's look at this list of 34 nations of the OECD. I went and broke them down based on area, left them in alphabetical order mostly. But you can see here, here's the big block. Austria, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland. I left Iceland in with the European ones, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Slovak Republic, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland. Very interesting that we see a lot of these former Soviet ones here. The Czech Republic, and we've got Hungary, Poland, Slovak, Slovenia. Quite a few in there. Now, you know, with the, the battle that we have over the Ukraine, uh, we've got the banksters destabilizing the countries that are not coming into their fold. The same thing going on, color revolution in Thailand. I've covered that. So that's the European segment of this. There's then the United States, Mexico, and Chile. Very interesting. I believe Jeff Berwick is down in Chile. Maybe Doug Casey and some of the others. Quite interesting. Then we have what I call the UK or the King's group United Kingdom Australia Canada Ireland and New Zealand and then we have a couple of Asian ones Japan and Korea and some outliers Israel and Turkey so what do these have in common they're all cooperating so that all the tax information financial information investment information they're all sharing information with each other I believe that this list of countries is the list of countries that is going to execute the soon to occur bail-ins when the financial crisis occurs and they don't want any of that money escaping so perhaps if you are wealthy enough I know probably most of my members aren't but if you are to have assets hidden outside of the country you may not want to have any of your money in any of these countries because they're already sharing all your financial information I think if you're looking at gold money I have an account that I opened up with James Turk because we were doing advertising and stuff and I think you can have it stored in either 
I thought it was Guernsey or somewhere in the UK, but you can also store it in Hong Kong, no, notably not on this list, Singapore. So there are alternatives, but I believe that this is the group of nations that is going to orchestrate a worldwide financial collapse, primarily this is the Trilateral Commission, except for a few exceptions, Europe, the UK, the United States, and Japan. That's the Trilateral Commission. That's David Rockefeller. That's the people behind the, their attempt at world government. I don't think they're going to succeed. I think the Chinese and the Russians are going to fight this thing. But that's the battle that we have going on. We have these unseen battles. We have secret war going on. It's going on in the financial markets. It's going on especially in the metals markets. And right now I'm seeing it and a lot of other people are seeing it in the internet as well with DDoS attacks coming from every which way. And we'll talk to you next time.